This video has been sponsored by NordVPN. More details in the end of the video. Hello everyone, in this video I am going to tell you about polonium, a highly radioactive and quite treacherous element, which has harmed a lot of people who dare to deal with it. The history of the discovery of the element with the atomic number 84 began with the research of Marie Curie and her husband Pierre, who tried to detect an unknown chemical which radiated powerful uranium rays in the uraninite mineral. Back then, radiation wasn't discovered yet, and units of its measurement did not even exist. That is why all studies of it were conducted with improvised electrometers. This was the first device measuring radiation, which measures the amount of electricity passing through ionized air created with the help of a piece of radioactive ore. The Curies supposed that there was an unknown element in the ore, being a few times more radioactive than uranium and thorium put together. As a result of the search of the unknown element, this couple of scientists processed 8 tons of uranium ore in the old hangar laboratory of the City of Paris Industrial Physics and Chemistry Higher Educational Institution. As a result of the enormous efforts, they managed to obtain an ore concentrate with a high level of uranium rays, and its analytical properties were very similar to those of bismuth. However, this metal itself isn't radioactive. That is why there had to be a new element in the concentrate. Marie Curie named this new element polonium after her motherland Poland because she had patriotic feelings towards her country. Polonium itself is formed in uraninite as a daughter product of uranium 238 decay. Here it is, almost at the very end of the decay chain and is formed from bismuth 210 with a half-life of just 138 days. As we can see from the chart, basically polonium is a pure alpha emitter, which can be measured only with a highly sensitive detector. If you didn't know, alpha particles are helium cores, which can easily be stopped with a sheet of paper or just a few centimeters of air because of their heavy mass. We can clearly see how alpha particles flying out of tolerated electrodes leave short traces from condensed ethanol behind in the Wilson cloud chamber and after that they lose all their energy. Since concentration of polonium in uranium ore is smaller than one tenth of a percent, it is extremely challenging to detect it in the ore. To do that, we need to measure the energy emitted by these elements weak alpha rays with sensitive detectors. First, polonium is purified from uranium ore to get rid of unnecessary decay products, which can cause incorrect readings. Ore solution in hydrochloric acid is poured into a special cuvette. After that, upon heating up, polonium deposits on the nickel plate. As a result, there forms a thin layer of polonium and few other non-radioactive elements on the metal, which won't cause incorrect readings. There deposits a negligible amount of polonium on the nickel plate, because even a dosimeter sensitive to alpha radiation almost doesn't detect anything. Polonium is detected with very sensitive detectors, with germanium crystals or with more modern microcrystals. Because alpha particles get so easily trapped in the air, it's better to place a sample closer towards the detector's crystals. Because of the very low concentration of polonium, it takes a few hours to develop a spectrum of polonium. After that, we can detect the presence of this element in the sample using the peaks detected. In higher concentrations, polonium extracted from uranium ore can be really hazardous because its isotope polonium-210 is highly alpha-active. One milligram of polonium radiates as many alpha particles as 5 grams of radium. Marie Curie's daughter Irene, who followed in her parents' footsteps, studying radiochemistry too, used this property of polonium in her research. In 1932, Irene and her husband Frederick studied a new mysterious radiation 
which was formed when polonium alpha rays contacted with light elements like carbon or boron. In this photo, we can see secondary rays flying out of a boron plate in the cloud chamber, which they made themselves. The couple dismissed these experiments as unimportant, but later on, British scientist James Chadwick conducted his own experiments based on their research and discovered neutron. Being slightly discouraged, the family continued their research, bombarding liquid nitrogen and aluminum foil with a powerful stream of alpha particles radiated by polonium. This time, alpha particles radiated by polonium atoms knocked neutrons from heavier aluminum atoms, creating new radioactive elements. Much to the surprise of scientists, these experiments helped produce another element, which is a radioactive isotope phosphorus-14. In other words, they artificially turned one chemical element into another. They were awarded a Nobel Prize for their achievement which was the discovery of artificially induced radioactivity. Unfortunately, after a long time of exposure to radioactive materials, Iran's health began deteriorating. In 1946, an ampule of his polonium exploded in her laboratory, and 10 years later, she died from leukemia, just like her mother Marie Curie did. However, her husband Frédéric continued her research thanks to whom the first French nuclear reactor Zoe was built. Can it be that this is the reason why nuclear power plants produce about 80% of electrical energy in France? Nowadays it is not the ore polonium is extracted from, rather it is created artificially using the discovery of Marie Curie and her husband. When bismuth 209 is bombarded with a stream of neutrons in a nuclear reactor, it turns into polonium-210, the most abundant and long-living isotope of this element. Because of being highly radioactive, pieces of polonium can self-ignite in the air and glow with a bluish color because of the radioluminescence effect. Polonium's property to self-heating was used in early satellites to heat up equipment, for instance in Soviet Cosmos satellites. Another peaceful use of polonium was the use of it in static eliminators, which can be used to remove electrostatic charge from paper, photographs and other stuff. Basically, this is when peaceful use of polonium ends. Also, this element was strategically important at the initial stages of development of the first nuclear bombs. The thing is, there is needed an initiator, which radiates a stream of neutrons, which later on leads to a chain reaction in the plutonium core and starts nuclear explosion. A small ball, consisting of an even smaller beryllium ball and coated in beryllium shell, served as an initiator. Sandwiched between them was a thin layer of polonium coated with gold and nickel. When an explosion was happening there, also happened a compression of the bomb, which is why beryllium reacts with polonium alpha radiation, directing a stream of neutrons, initiating explosion of plutonium discharge. Besides military use, in recent times it is becoming more and more common for the mass media to talk about polonium as a perfect poison. Since polonium compounds are quite soluble in water and more than 25,000 times more toxic than potassium cyanide, this is not a mere coincidence. Even two valent polonium compounds have quite an indicative color, which is bright pink. In time, because of the radioactivity, the solution turns yellow because of the self-oxidation of polonium to the four-valent state. Because polonium's chemical properties are slightly similar to other elements from the group 16, for instance to those of sulfur and selenium, it can accumulate in body tissues, substituting the initial elements in the proteins and amino acids. The worst thing through is that because of being highly radioactive, when getting into your organism, it can strongly irradiate all internal organs with powerful alpha radiation which can seriously damage DNA. This is what happened to Alexander Litvinenko, which according to the investigation carried out by the British intelligence agency, was poisoned with polonium added to this cup of tea. 
To sum up, we can say that Polonium is the most treacherous element, which killed almost everyone who dared to touch it. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring that video. This service encrypts and protects all the data that you exchange online. This means that your banking information, your passwords and your browsing history in general is kept private. Without VPN, the internet service provider can see almost everything you do and if you connect to public Wi-Fi, everything you do online is complete open to hackers. Personally, I cannot put all my personal information, especially my channel passwords, on the risk. So to protect myself, I use NordVPN service. It is easy to install this app on your phone or on a desktop computer. NordVPN encrypts all your data and sends it through a secure server, also changing your IP address, so all your information becomes completely secured. Also, right now, they are offering a great deal with 84% off your plan, also including 4 months for free. You can get one by going to nordvpn.com slash toysoy or by clicking the link in the description. And finally, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.